Now we're gonna look at taking the cam out of this thing. In order to do that, we're going to take the push rod tubes off, or we're gonna pop the clips out and lift them up, and then we're gonna cut the push rods themselves. Uh, some people just cut the push rod tube and everything. I'd just rather do it this way. In the past, I'd made the comment, pull the rocker boxes off and do it the right way. There's a lot of oil lines on top of this thing. So we're gonna do it this way. So here's how it's done. You can put a flathead screwdriver underneath this little tab, roll it forward and pop it out of there. Should be able to lift your push rod tubes right on up there. And you should be able to see your push rods. Before you reinstall anything, make sure you pull all the O-rings out. It's obvious on the bottom ones, but don't forget about the ones up on the head. Now that we have the push rod tubes off, we're going to take off the lifter block covers, which is just these four bolts, and we're going to pull this cam cover off. Now this cam cover might be baked on here a little bit. You might have to take a soft face mallet and give it a little tap on each side. And also, let it be known that uh, even though your oil is technically in the oil pan back here, there's still gonna be some oil in the bottom of this engine case. So have an oil pan ready, because when you pull this off, some oil's gonna drain on out of there. You want to make sure you have a nice clean spot set up for any engine parts that you're going to reuse. Engines are very unforgiving of even the smallest particulates. Make sure things are clean, make sure everything's stored clean, that way nothing gets in there. From there, you can lift the other lifter block off, keep them in a nice, safe location there. You can lift the old gasket up off of there too. Now, whenever you have a whole bunch of bolts like this on a cover, it's best to go around and break them all free first. You go in a crisscross pattern or just crack them all free. It's less chance of having one bolt sitting tight and then possibly stripping out. It's good practice. You should be able to grab this cover, maybe wiggle it off of there. If not, we're gonna get a soft, soft face mallet and give it a couple taps. There we go. And there's the extra oil drain out. And as you take things off the engine, or before you go put them back on, you'll wanna peel all the old gaskets off. Uh, you wanna get the gasket surface nice and clean too. That way there's no dents or deviations or anything for oil to leak past with the new gasket. Now the next step is gonna to be to remove the lifters. Now there's a lifter mount, lifter block, whatever you wanna call it, it holds the lifters in. It takes a 3 8 wrench to get that off of there. Just break that free. should be able to just lift that right up off of there. There's a little dowel pin in the middle there. Make sure that comes with it. We are going to use new ones, but still. From there, you should be able to lift the lifters right on up out of there. Now, we're also going to keep these in exact order of the location of they come out of there in case we have to measure anything. Now, these have Loctite on the threads, so obviously we'll put some on it when we reassemble it, but we will run a tap through there and clean out those threads that way we know we get the proper torque spec. Take a clean rag, wipe off your surfaces. The exciting part, removing the cam gears and then removing the cam plate. First, we are going to do the cam gear. 
cam sprocket. Takes a 916 socket. Now, for some reason, while you're doing this, if the engine starts to roll over, they actually make a special tool that's to lock the gear to the chain. If you don't have that special tool, that's fine. A primary locking tool will work to go up in there or any type of really hard plastic or something of that sort. Basically, you don't want it to damage the metal, but you want it to be hard enough it obviously doesn't crush. So now we're gonna break the gear on the crank pinion or break the bolt free on the crank pinion. Slide that sucker off of there. Then we're gonna take our Torx bit here, which is a T27 Torx bit, and we're gonna take off the cam chain tensioner. Next, we should be able to get behind these gears and carefully slide them out. You're gonna have to do them evenly. You can't just do one or the other or the chain will go crooked and it'll bind up. Once you get these off of here, you can hang them on the wall because it makes cool garage art. Next, we're going to take all these the Allen bolts here that are sticking up because these four here in the middle are holding the oil pump on and we want the oil pump to come off with the cam plate. All right, so you could draw this out, or I'm just gonna poke them through there. Really hard cardboard. By doing that, it will be easy to keep track of all the bolts that come out of here. Now, the next step from here, just grab the back of the cam plate and work it towards yourself. Now remember, this is sitting at precision surfaces, so it's gotta be perfectly straight, or it's gonna bind up and it won't come off of there. Now you can grab it, get your fingers back behind it wherever you can, just grab a hold of it and if you want, you can take the cam out with it or push the cam back in a little bit. Hang on, that precision washer. Should slide it right off of there. There's your oil pump. And we're dribbling out of the floor. And then here is your camshaft. Give a few minutes to let all the oil drain here out of this uh, or it'll end up in your shoe. Is that full rotation? Oh yeah. We are within a half a thou. That is a nice straight crankshaft. So now it's inner cam bearing removal and reinstallation time. Got our tool here. Put some oil onto the threads to lubricate the threads up. There is a, you see this little cone piece with the little taper on it? That's the piece that's going to go into the bearing. So you slide it through here. Then you line it up with the, the cam bearing in there. Then you have the thumb screws that go in here and tighten up. So when you center this up, you'll feel it snap into the bearing. The instructions request a dead blow hammer. It says light taps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap it and those little fingers are gonna go down, should go through the bearing, and they'll spring out on the other side. It went through just like it should. Whew. Now you can take the washer and thread the nut on here. I have the nut thread up there, have the washer behind it. So I'm gonna hold the giant adjustable wrench here. I'm gonna take a ratcheting wrench and crank this back here. Now that your nut and washer's up on there, you want to insert your dowel pin back in there. That'll make the fingers flare out. Just give it a little tap. While you're holding the puller out, tighten that nut up there. You can hold this wrench and turn this nut in here. It should basically jack the bearing puller right on out of there, taking the cam bearing with it. Now, you can undo your thumb screws. Pull the whole thing out of there. Cam bearing all, right there. Gonna put a little uh, engine oil onto the threads of this thing. And we're gonna thread it right on through. Now that we have it started through there, make sure everything's clean. You have this little 
adapter piece with the threads on it. Thread that down on there. Then you have this bushing that the bearing's going to sit onto, held in place by an O-ring. Wipe that off. Make sure that is as clean as you can possibly get it. Even if it's brand new, clean it. From there, we're gonna take our new needle bearing out of the package. Now this will slide right down on there. Before we go to install it, we're gonna to wanna to put some assembly lube down inside there. So we're gonna use a decent amount of this. SNS gave us a container here. Probably don't even need that much, but we're gonna use it anyways. Take that, slide that down on there. Line up your installer and put your thumb screws in there. Make sure all those are down tight. That way your engine bearing installer is square to the engine and square to the case. From there, here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna take my light, stick my giant head in here and make sure all this lines up when it gets back there. The other mounting hole will work like a little peephole. Now that I can see there that it's all started in and I have that uh, step bushing on there, I'm gonna crank this in. I'm not gonna use a lot of force. If it starts binding, starts doing weird, anything like that, stop. But I'm gonna slide it on in there. And then when that shoulder gets to the face of the case, that means the bearing is pressed all the way in. So you don't wanna go past that. There should be a slight increase in pressure on the wrench at that point, And you wanna stop there. Remember, I have a decent amount of leverage here. So light touch, take a peek. Everything is going in all nice and even as it should. Go some more. Right there, just stopped. So, spin a ratcheting wrench around. Crank it back on out of there. Now give it a look in there and make sure your cam bearing is sitting back into the engine case. You don't want to have it stepped out or anything or when you put the cam in there, it could bind up on it. So make sure it's step, set back in there a little bit and you're good to move on. Now we're going to assemble the oil pump to the cam plate. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take sections of this oil pump out of here. One is the actual pressure pump. The other one's the scavenging pump. What we're going to do, we're just going to pick up the inner race out of this here, keep them in order, keep them orientated the same way. Then we're going to use assembly lube. We're going to put a lot on here. Put some down in there. If you end up using all of it, you can buy more of this stuff. It's relatively cheap. There's no shame in ever using too much. You can get to walk around there, make sure it's all lubed up real well. Put your plate back on here. And this outer one here. I'm gonna rotate this around so all the flats in here line up. It'll make installation out of the crankshaft a hundred times easier. I'm gonna slide this in here and put some down in there, even around the outside of this oil pump. Slide that down in there, give her a spin, cover this sucker, and inside too. It should slide in there perfectly straight. It should be able to rotate it around there a little bit, make the macaroni and cheese noise. Square a little more assembly lube down there, because why not? Then from there, this is the output from our oil pump. This goes into the case. You want to be sure and take the old O-ring out and put a new O-ring on there. If you have to take this back out for any reason, put a new O-ring on there. We should be able to line this up. Then you can take your bolts and washers supplied with the kit. We, I checked the directions and we do want to put medium strength thread locker on these. I say medium strength and not calling out the color, though it is blue, because sometimes the color varies by manufacturer. Text, thread locker, Loctite, whatever. So pull a little up on there, drop her down in there. Now, 
just snug all these up. Follow the letter directions, A, B, C, D, uh, but do not tighten them up, just snug them up on there. It takes a 3 16 Allen, by the way. Now we're ready to put some assembly lube on the inside of the bearing races, put the cam in, and put the oil pump back on. We have our cam here, so before we install that, we're going to get some assembly lube on this sucker. We're going to put it on all the bearing surfaces and cam lobe surfaces. Just smear it around there. Get a nice good coat on it. And while you're at it, put a nice coat in here too, and down here. I took this seal off our old oil pump. It's kind of like a hard plastic thing, but it does have like a soft lip to it. We're just going to snap it in place on there. Then remember to change out this O-ring here that SNS supplied with the kit. Change that out on the engine case, and then we're ready to reinstall the cam plate. Now we have our cam with a thick coat of assembly lube on it. Slide that back into place. Now take your cam plate. I already went through and tried to oil line up all the flats on my oil pump. I tried to line them all up, and I have the crank positioned with the flats in about the same way. So hopefully with just a wee little bit of jiggling, it'll shimmy on in there. Also, I replaced this O-ring here already. Now take your oil pump and everything, slide it right up on there, give it a little wiggle back and forth to get it all to line up, just like that. Now we'll go around, install all our Allen screws here that hold the cam plate on with a little bit of medium strength thread locker on each one, and then we will torque them all to spec. The cam plate's back inside the engine. So I still have all my bolts here orientated the same way. They're all the same length, so the orientation doesn't really matter, turns out, but the nice thing of our little cardboard assembly is it's easy to put the thread locker on the bolts. From there, we're gonna just run them all in in the order is numbered on the cam plate. Now we're going to torque them all down in the same pattern. And we have our torque wrench set between 90 and 120 20 inch pounds. Double check your instructions or your service manual. Don't just guess at this. This one needs to be right. There we go. Everything is torqued down and see it in place. Now we're ready to put our gears back on. Okay, now that we've torqued the outer ones, we're gonna to torque down the oil pump bolts. Same torque spec. And we're gonna follow the pattern written on here. We're ready to put the gears on. We are ready for reinstallation of the cam chain. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put our washer on here, give it a good bath in assembly oil, give these splines a little assembly oil. Heck, put some in the bearing, why not? What you're gonna to wanna to look at is there is a flat on this cam here, on this spline shaft. So we're gonna set that right at 12 o'clock. And then we have the crank with the flat on it set at 12 o'clock. And that will line up with our chain when our timing marks are on there. So put our washer up on there. Slide the cam gear onto the cam. Slide the pinion onto the pinion there. Pinion gear onto the pinion there. There we go, check to make sure. Our timing marks are still lined up. From there, we can take the bolts and washers that go in here, uh, put some medium strength thread locker on those, run them in, and torque those to spec. Now we're going to reinstall reinstall the bolts on the crank and the cam. Make sure the old thread locker's cleaned off of there. Take some red high strength thread locker. Medium or high strength thread locker on cam bolt as well. We're just going to run them both in there until they're snug. Now we torque both the top and the bottom, the first torque to 15 foot pounds. There we go. Now we torque the bottom one to 24, the top one to 34. There we go. Both of those are tight. Now we can actually roll the bike over there, check our timing marks again. Timing marks still line up. All right, from here, we're gonna reinstall our cam chain tensioner. I got some medium strength thread locker on there. So we're gonna start both these in here. 
Then we're also going to torque these to 90 to 120 inch pounds. Snug both of those up and torque them to spec. Now that everything's back together, we can give it a bath and assembly lube. Then we can put the cover back on there. Make sure you use a new gasket. Make sure your gasket surfaces are nice and clean. Go around, get all these started in there. Don't even run them down yet until you got them in a couple threads. Then I'll keep the gasket from going crooked and binding up on you. Now we're gonna run them all snug in a crisscross pattern. Now we're going to torque these all down to 80 inch pounds. All right, and from there, we can reinstall the lifters. Now the next step is going to be just grab the lifters and you can just lift them right on up out of here. Shouldn't be anything holding them in. Just like that. Okay, now our next step is to prepare the new lifters. What we have to do is we have to pump them up to make sure they're full of oil before we install them in the engine. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. We got this thing from Nine Finger Fabrication and you can drop them in there, fill it full of oil, put a vacuum pump on it and it draws all the air out of the lifters and completely bleeds them out so they're ready for installation. So, we'll cut open our new lifter package here. They're in oily packages, inside oily packages. And you want to make sure everything's nice and clean. Make sure your shop towels are clean. Make sure your hands are clean. We can take this up out of here and set each one down inside there. Then lower them back down into our jug. We want to take some motor oil and fill it up to one inch over the top of the lifters, approximately one inch. Basically, you just wanna make sure they're submerged and make sure there's enough room that when air bubbles go up, it doesn't drain down too far. It's probably about one inch. Now, Nine Finger Fabrication recommends a vacuum pump, like an electric motor one. We don't have one, but we do have a good old hand pump for bleeding brakes. So we're gonna put the hose on here and we're gonna pump it up to a vacuum. And then we're going to keep an eye on the gauge and make sure it holds a vacuum for at least like 10 to 15 minutes. There you can see the air being pulled up out of there already. So we'll just keep checking on this periodically because the gauge will probably drop a little bit. We'll give it a few pumps. We just want to make sure it stays under vacuum the entire time. Our lifter's all bled out. We got a handy little lifter tray here. So we'll set that down, and then we're gonna lower each one of these lifters down into the port. Now there is a wee tiny little hole right there. Uh, and if you look down inside your lifter, you should see a hole inside there as well. Now, that's considered good, pr good procedure, but honestly, um, if it's pointing the wrong way, the oil will still get around there and still fill it up. So. Slide those right down in there. They're gonna be a perfect fit down in there. You shouldn't have to tap them or force them in any way, but it does have to line up perfectly or it won't drop in. Our next step is to put our lifter retainers on there and they are labeled R and F for rear and front. So when you drop these down on here, SNS requests that you check them with a 2000s feeler gauge to make sure everything has nice clearance there and also to make sure they didn't twist anywhere. So we're gonna check the clearance on both of them. So what we're gonna do is we'll slide our 2000s feeler gauge down in there, hold that in place. Then we're gonna take our new hardware and we're gonna add some medium strength thread locker to it. And 
spread it right down in there. Then from there, we can take our 3 8 socket and our torque wrench and torque it down to 100 inch pounds. All right, that's torqued properly. Now we're gonna take our feeler gauge, check the back lifter, still has that same clearance. So therefore, that one's good to go. Now we'll repeat the process with the front lifters. Run that in until it stops. And torque that one to spec. Now we're ready to reinstall our lifter block covers. We cleaned our gasket surfaces. So we're gonna lay our new gaskets in place. Make sure everything lines up as it should. Make sure nothing looks weird. If it doesn't, stop and investigate why. Now, with nice new clean lifter covers, gonna set these down in place. Make sure, again, everything lines up properly. There we go. Now, one of the important things you wanna do whenever you have a gasket like that is start in each screw by a couple threads, especially before you tighten any of them up. That not only makes sure nothing twists sideways, but also makes sure the gasket doesn't move into any weird direction and get pinched. And we will do the same for the back one. Next, we're gonna to torque those lifter blocks to 140 inch pounds. All right, now after that, we're gonna look at reinstalling the push rod covers, or the push rod tubes and the push rods. Before you do that, Make sure you get all your old O-rings out of there, especially the ones that are stuck up inside your cylinder heads. Now we're gonna reassemble our, our pushrod tubes. We have to reuse our springs and our caps from the old ones, and then put some new O-rings down inside here. Now you can take your new O-rings, put one down in the lifter block. I'm gonna put one up in the head, assuming it'll stay there. If it won't, put a little grease on it. Then we're gonna slide our push rods in through our pushrod tubes. Then from there, we're gonna put a little medium strength thread locker on those threads, run that jam nut up, and jam it down really good and tight. Now from there, we'll run our jam nut up. We'll take two 7 sixteenths wrenches and tighten it down real well. All right. Then from there, we'll extend the top of the push rod tube up and we can then put our clip in there. You wanna make sure your bot top and bottom of the tube are sitting well up and down into the O-ring. If they are not, you will never get these in there. Push the top piece up in there. Take a flathead screwdriver, push it Push the little spring cap down and push in with your thumb. Just like that. If you aren't sure, give it a little extra push there. Make sure it's all seated back in there. Even give that cap a little wiggle. Make sure it's all seated in. Just like that. Repeat the entire process for the other three push rods.
So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put together our new push rod tubes. Now SNS gave us some mostly new ones, but we still have to reuse this spring and washer that comes the kind of the little spring and washer cap there. So on this sucker, you're going to want to take this all apart. You have your inner sleeve here. Chrome cap goes up on the inner sleeve. Then your spring goes on that inner sleeve. Then the washer goes on there. Then the O-ring. So it's all in that order. Easiest way to remember this is the washer protects the O-ring from getting torn up by the rough edge of the spring. Once you're done, slide all that together. Then take your new push rod tube, which is shorter, and slide it right down in there, and then slide it all together. And everything should be good right there. Then you can take your new O-ring for the top, new O-ring for the bottom, and pop them right up on there. Take your new, your new push rod, slide it all through there. Make sure your push rod adjuster is slid all the way up in there. Look down inside here, make sure your lifter is all the way down. You don't want it protruding up out of that retainer. If it is, it means it's sitting on a cam lobe and you won't set everything up properly. Now, should be able to slide this up into the back port there. Hopefully there's enough clearance to then slide it right down in. Then you can grab the small diameter shaft and start spinning it down out of there. There's a little jam nut here. You kind of want to hold that in place with your finger as you do this. And at first it'll seem kind of impossible and you'll get annoyed with it. But eventually the threads will pick up and it'll start extending out and it'll all make a little more sense. Then again, you thread this out until there's essentially zero lash to where you can't move the push rod up and down. Then. Hold on to the small bottom shaft with a quarter inch wrench. Then take the upper one, the upper nut, crank it out for full turns. Then add some medium strength thread locker, run your jam nut up and lock it down. And from there, slide the top piece up in the head, slide the bottom piece down into the lifter block Put your clip up in there. Take your flathead screwdriver, pop your clip back in place. Just like that. Repeat the lat, repeat that whole process one more time. 